I've spent my entire 19 years in education in faith-based schools, and I think as administrators who are trying to cultivate an atmosphere uh, that reflects God's goodness and love. We don't want to think we have bullies in our midst, and so we are probably inclined to be blind to that and to say, we don't have bullies, this isn't a problem, I don't need to have him come in. Um, you might not have physical bullies that you see in TVs, but it's the, it's the psychological bullying that is, is really so painful and often undetected, and, and statistics sh bear out that that is happening. Where, as Paul says, 10 or more kids are together, it's probably happening. I know what it's like to suffer in a profound way. I was horribly bullied. I don't want that to be the case for you. Bullying is injustice. People are being tormented for no good reason. Please know that you are always valuable because you are made in the very image of God. No one can take that away. We brought in Paul because of a, as a faith-based school, um, my heart is to cultivate in our kids uh, a love for all that's good and true and beautiful. And so I often talk to the kids about the greatest commandment, commandments is to love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, but that is coupled with and love thy neighbor as thyself. And so there's no way we can call ourselves followers of Jesus if we don't love one another. God made us with dignity and value and worth. No one has the right to humiliate another person and take that dignity away. He said that the Good Samaritan asked a very different question than the first two. The first two asked, what would happen to me if I help? And the Good Samaritan asked, what will happen to me if I don't help? What would happen if they don't intervene? We never ask ourselves that question. Often what you see, uh, sadly, is unkindness, exclusion, derision, um, and not love. And so as a school where we want love to be our hallmark, I thought what greater thing could we do to complement what we're already trying to do on a daily basis than to bring in Paul, because sometimes it is really, the prophet isn't welcome at his hometown. You need someone to come in from the outside. You gotta shake things up a little bit. And to highlight the importance of courage, uh, the sin of cowardice. You know, we can't be good unless we're courageous. It's the virtue that underpins all other virtues. We cannot be kind consistently unless we possess courage. Do you know that a girl is five times more likely to defend a target than a boy? Without courage, we cannot be compassionate. We can't be consistently good. From a kind of effectiveness point of view, you want to empower the kids to police, if you will, one another, if you're really gonna get at this problem. But, but more importantly, it's really about shaping our kids' character. And we want them to be uh, men and women of, of courage. And, and he does that great job of coupling courage with love. Uh, that you can't, over the long haul, be a person of love, of kindness, of justice, of mercy, if you don't have courage uh, kind of buttressing those virtues. Will our children, not someone else's child, will your child, will my children, do the right thing afraid and help that kid who's being victimized. Heroes have obstacles put in front of them, but they push past those obstacles and do the right thing often afraid. In my mind, just bringing in Paul to talk to the parents would be very incomplete. Just having them talk to the, the students would be equally inadequate. That you need to have uh, kind of that three-legged stool analogy of having faculty, students, and parents hearing a common message and rallying around a common cause. And what I really appreciate about Paul is not only the scriptural, but the kind of philosophical underpinnings of his approach. We're encouraging kids to just intervene on everyday garden variety bullying, and it's not that hard. We've got to prepare kids what to do before it even happens and there must be parental expectation for them to do the right thing. Many of our lives would be better today, frankly, if we knew how to stand up to a bully. Let's give that gift to our children. Imagine if you knew how to spot a bully, and even more so, repel one earlier in life. Boy, bring Paula in to help, kind of, again, shore up that idea of, of, of cultivating courage, uh, and teaching kids to stand up against unkindness, because that's happening. Bullying needs in a certain environment to exist and thrive. It needs those bystanders to be around 
To see a public display of pain and anguish, to see domination and control, that's what bullies want. And what we need to do is dismantle the theater. And it usually does have an audience in mind. There's a theater playing out, and so we want these, these bystanders. Uh, to be the kind of people that when they grow into adults will be those along bystanders. Now we want them to act that way and certainly when they're older. It's not an issue of knowing that it's wrong. In most cases you know it's wrong. It's not necessarily a case of whether or not you feel it is wrong. You'll feel it's wrong. The real issue was will you have the courage to act on what you know and what you feel. We need to require that our kids do something. And when they do, they become bigger, stronger people, far more conformed to the true image of Christ. Paul loves to quote Martin Luther King. I, I love that, that quote that there is a arc to the moral universe and it bends towards justice. And this idea that God has called us to be his co-laborers in this revealing of his justice. And uh, so that's what I long for for our kids. And I think what better way to start practicing that now on the playground, in the bathrooms, in the hallways of standing up against injustice and standing for God's love and courage.